Everybody and welcome. We are a group of Kildare enthusiasts with a passion for the Irish draft horse. We're part of a countrywide organisation dedicated to preserving and promoting our national breed. I hope you find our video interesting. I hope you enjoy watching it as much as we've enjoyed putting it together. Thank you. King Henry VI banned the sale of Irish horses to the continent during the Middle Ages. It was said he didn't want his armies meeting them in the hands of his enemies. And so begins the origins of the Irish draft horse. It is a versatile, powerful and athletic animal with substance, quality and above all, good temperament. The Irish draft is the national horse breed of Ireland which is developed primarily for farm use. It was the ultimate utility animal on the small Irish farm. It had to be able to plough a field, be ridden under saddle hunt with the hounds and take the family trap to church on Sunday. They were bred to be economical to keep, surviving on grass and gorse. At the beginning of the 20th century, the breed flourished, but numbers subsequently dropped as a result of losses during the Great War. The British Army, short of horses, went to the horse fairs around Ireland to buy them. Here, a horse is ready for loading on Dublin's north wall, the blindfold, to prevent any fear on loading. In France, there were no blindfolds. They were exposed to the terrible horrors of war. Many served in cavalry units, but most were used to tow field artillery and supply trains. The army, as an institution, cared little for them, but their individual handlers were different. British General Jack Seeley stated, I hardly ever saw a man strike his horse in anger during all the four years of war, and again and again. I have seen a man risk his life, and indeed lose it, for the sake of his horse. It is thought that upwards of 70,000 Irish horses made up some of the 8 million horses and mules that were killed during the war. One of the first fitting tributes to the military horse was put on a plaque in a London church in 1926. It reads, In grateful and reverent memory to the Empire's horses that fell in the Great War, most obediently, and often most painfully, they died. Faithful unto death, not one of them is forgotten before God. As World War II raged, the Allies, unlike the German army, required few equines, and the draft could go about its civilian work. Poet Patrick Kavner would remember the workhorse of 1938. Their gloss flanks and manes outshone, the flying splinters of the sun. The tranquil rhythm of that team was a slow-flowing meadow stream. And I saw Fidia's chisel there, an ocean stallion, mountain mare, seeing with eyes the spirit unsealed, plough horses in a quiet field. But after World War II, this way of life was changing for them. 85-year-old Miles Wilson remembers the working horse around Dublin in the 1950s. But they were gaily decorated now with harness. All the harness uh, with, with CIE now and um, Richard and Guinness's horses, all their harness would be polished, had brass fittings and all that and the thing, and they'd be gleaming. And there was a sight to, sight to see now along the, the roads, you know. Drivers would be very proud of them and they'd stop to deliver something they'd nearly go hungry before they would uh, let the horse go hungry, you know. The widespread use of the tractor in the 1950s had a huge impact on farming. Ferguson estimated their Ferguson 20 tractor being upwards of five times more efficient than a horse. I remember the tractors coming in, yeah, and the first tractor I saw around our place was uh, John Kennedy of Spawell, you know, one of these baby Fords, and he had a mowing bar on it. He went around cutting meadows one year. The economic logic of the tractor was sudden and shocking for the farm horse. To be competitive, Farmers bought tractors and sold off their horses. It was said, it was a common sight at fairs to see these brood mares going for meat 
to the distress of the men obliged to sell them. The market became swamped, and the only place left to sell them was to the continent for meat. And one fellow leading them onto the, onto the boat. Going to uh, Antwerp, Belgium. They were going for export for meat, but they went there and were slaughtered, and there was some terrible suffering amongst the horses, you know. Yeah, I was down the North Wall there one day, and I, two of them got loose, and they went nearly up into Gold Street. So they terrified, petrified the horses were. They were probably young horses, young, able horses, you know. And they're on cobblestones, too. They slip all over the place. In Britain, between the years 1947 and 1948, 200,000 horses were sent for slaughter. 40% were under the age of three. In Ireland, in 1945, there were 458,000 workhorses. By 1980, this had diminished to just 68,000. Some said it had to stop. Something had to be done. These wonderful horses had to be saved. And so people began to believe in the Irish draft again. And there was a new beginning. Groups like the Irish Draft Horse Breeders Association became established. The Kildare Branch run events for Irish Draft horses like their annual Working Hunter Show as a means of showcasing the breed and it gives Irish Draft owners the chance to compete with their Irish Draft peers. But the name Irish Draft is somewhat misleading in that it conjures up an image of a coarse, heavy draft horse. Peter McLaughlin of Ellistown County Kildare has produced Irish Drafts for decades. Now he drives them. He tells us more about the breed type. I'd like to describe uh, my ideal draft, the traits that I like. Starting with the head, I like a medium sized head, not too large, with plenty of width between the ears. Going at the neck, I like a, a nice neck flowing into the shoulder, a nice slope on the shoulder. With, I like plenty of width between the front legs and a deep rib. And that's where your engine is. Going back to the back then. Room for a full size saddle with a little to spare. Going onto the coupe. That's where the drive comes from. So you need a nice round coupe that will push you forward when you're cantering and jumping. And going to the legs. Nice straight front leg. Should be down straight from the shoulder. With a good bone but a short cannon bone. And uh, the the fetlocks, short fetlocks are short coupled. Going back to the hind legs, the hind legs should be slightly under the horse with a good bristle, good hock going down with the pastor again and good feet. Good size feet. That'd be my idea of a, a proper draft. Of course, there is one final ingredient to the draft that makes it so special which is so important for the everyday equestrian when it comes to even the basics of shoeing, loading and handling. And that ingredient is... It's, it's temperament. Because you need a horse that you, anybody can handle, from a child to an adult. You can bring them anywhere, in particular when you go out hunting, and they can jump and stop, they can wait around, you can drive them, you can work them. They'll do anything for you. And that, that mare there now, standing there, uh, she's a brood mare. She's normally out in the field, but look, when you bring her in, she'll stand around, wait for you, talk to you. And when you go hunting, uh, they're always known as having the fifth leg. And the fifth leg means that when you jump onto a bank, they'll land safely and they'll get you off that bank safely. And that you get home safe and the horse comes home safe and you have an enjoyable day. That's what owned in a draft is all about. It is this temperament that makes them especially popular for crossing with thoroughbreds and warm bloods, producing the popular Irish sport horses, which excel at the highest levels of eventing and show jumping. The stamina, docility and good sense of the breed make it ideally suitable for all these disciplines. And so life goes on for the Irish draft. Here, she -Oak, Missy and Hero, of three generations, cross their pasture and 10-year-old Owen competes at a side saddle event. Seven and eight-year-old Lear and Satanta patrol the streets of Dublin. And four-year-old Baru clears his first show jumping round. 10-year-old Sullis is not ready for his close-up. Nine-year-old Fionn heads out on a hack. And cool dude Jake takes morning exercise on Donabate Strand. The term cool dude is apt, 
as this Irish draft is 34 years old. The Irish draft horse, indeed all horses, have been treated harshly by history, but the breed has proved its worth, brave to hunt, fearless to fight, elegant to show, calm to police, bold in jump, daring to cross country, and of course plenty of brawn to work. But it is thanks to the past generations who have stood by the Irish draft, striving to protect, to preserve and to promote it, that it can now be passed on to a new generation.